Hey, hey. Happy New Year. So, I was thinking the other day about this weird piece of junk that I inherited uh, when I purchased my previous home. And as we were moving into it, uh, you know, uh, bit by bit, uh, I noticed that the previous owner had left this weird piece of industrial equipment uh, in the back room in the basement. It was an incredibly heavy piece of something. I, I still don't know what it was. It was made of cast iron um, and it had metal wheels that had, of course, rusted uh, and <laughs> weren't even like round or moving uh, very much, uh, so much rust. It had a large puffy fabric cylinder um, covered with that blue and tan mattress cover fabric like from the 1920s and 30s with a metal shield over part of it and uh, it was electric, but it was an ancient plug that probably wasn't safe to plug in. Uh, and it also had a gas line, uh, one of those flexible metal lines to connect to natural gas. So I have no idea what that thing was. The best I could come up with, maybe it's like a press of some kind in the dry cleaning industry. I don't know. But anyway, there it was. And it was in the way because it was huge. And so after a couple years of this, I decided, okay, I have got to get that thing out of here. It's just, it, every time I rearrange the basement, I'm trying to move that darn thing and it's just in my way. So I got two other guys uh, to help me drag it across the basement floor and up the basement steps. And we're talking like, a step at a time, maybe two, because it's so freaking heavy that the three of us, grunting and panting, cannot possibly carry this up the stairs in one smooth movement. So we get it to the top, finally, and catch our breath. And then, of course, we have to take it out the back door and down the driveway to put out on the curb uh, for for the trash people to pick up this thing uh, at some point. So I already knew that I needed to make a call uh, to the trash, the city waste removal people <laughs> to give them the heads up. You, you might need to bring a friend or two uh, to pick this mystery uh, equipment up. So we get it out to the street uh, on the curb there. And we're sitting on the front porch uh, having a beer in celebration because we're sweaty, we're sore, <laughs> we're covered with rust uh, from dragging this thing up the stairs and all of that. And right then, this ancient rusted out pickup truck pulls up in front of the house and parks. And this little truck, uh, you know, one of the leaf springs was bad. And so it was like leaning uh, a little bit weird and rusting out, like I said, and this little old guy gets out. Now, you know, we're talking a few years ago, so old to me was probably my current age. But anyway, he was old uh, to me at the time, gets out of the truck. And we're talking like, a little guy, like maybe five feet tall, five, five at the most, maybe 150 pounds, right? And he gets out and he walks over to that piece of mystery equipment and checking the connections and I don't know what he was doing, but then he saw us sitting up on the front porch and he said, hey, do you mind if I take this? I've been looking for one of these 
for the longest time and and all of your connections uh, seem good and I could use this. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, I was amazed that somebody, A, knew what the heck it was and B, <laughs> could actually put the monstrosity to some good use. Uh, so I, I said, oh, go ahead, take it. We'll give you a hand. But before any of the three of us could actually get off our butts and, uh, you know, walk across the lawn to help him, this little guy bent down, grabbed this unit, picked it up over his head, and threw it into the bed of his pickup truck, which, of course, squeaked and groaned uh, in protest. Uh, under the weight of this thing, whatever it was. Thanks, he says, and he gets back in his truck and he drives away. And the three of us were like, what did we just see here? <laughs> Who is this guy? How did he do that? There's a lesson in that, I think. And it reminds me of the line in Psalm 118, which we, we use in reference to Jesus the Christ. Psalm 118, verse 22, the stone which the builders rejected has in fact become the chief cornerstone. Sometimes you and I see very little value or no value left in something. And so we decide to just throw it away, discard it. And it's always a surprise, a pleasant surprise, when somebody else tells us that that, that thing is exactly what they've been looking for. This is especially true, I think, when we look in the rearview mirror at our life. It's New Year's Eve, man. It's a time for looking back and for looking forward. So there are times when we do look back at our lives and we think, well, I really don't have anything useful to give anybody. I got nothing left. And we're too broken, we think, sometimes to, to help anybody else or to be useful, especially especially as we get a little older and our bodies and maybe our minds uh, aren't quite up to speed. They're not quite what they used to be. But it is precisely in those moments, I think, when we can discover new ways to help somebody else in need or give somebody you know, a few kind words that they've been needing for a long time or, or making someone's day perhaps by complimenting them on how they look that day. What we believe holds no value might in fact be what matters most to somebody else. And here's another example. From last night. So yesterday, one of my clients asked if he could see me privately uh, in my office, and and we've had a good connection uh, from the very beginning. Now this is a young guy. This guy could be my grandson, uh, and he's a musician. So we talk music a lot, um, uh, and he's also quite an accomplished writer when it comes to beats and writing rap lyrics, right? So he wanted to read me a song that he had been working on and that he hadn't shown anybody else, but he wanted to get my reaction to it. I said, cool, let's hear it. Because I've heard other stuff of his and it's extremely powerful and good. So this particular song, was addressed to his best friend, 
who had completed suicide a couple years ago, and also to his friend's mother, who had taken her own life a few months after he did because she simply could not live in a world without her son. Well, that song was so raw and so honest and he was able to put into words all of those things that those of us who are survivors want to say to someone that we love who completed suicide. He voiced all those things. And I found myself starting to tear up as I'm listening to it. My son, Phil, completed suicide two and a half years ago. And until last night, I hadn't shed a single tear. It turned out that that rap song was exactly the thing that I was needing. I just didn't know that I needed it. And so we had a kind of a turnaround of roles uh, last night. And, um, you know, instead of me giving the client a hug, the client gave me a hug. Uh, and it was, it was a powerful moment. There is a lesson in both of those little stories, I think, for all of us. When we are feeling discouraged, when we are feeling down because we're looking in that rear view mirror of life and we see the mistakes and the bad choices and all of that, wishing somehow things could be different, We need to change the focus. We can try to remember the simple truth that sometimes by offering the things that we overlook or devalue, we can in fact become the right blessing at the right time for somebody else. God can literally change the world using the little things that we reject in a whole new way. Truly a divine recycling project. So today, New Year's Eve day, I'm looking forward to the burning bowl ceremony that I will facilitate tonight. A lot of losses over the past year, a lot of victories as well. So, I've got my bottle of sparkling juice chilling in the fridge, and I'm sure I won't make it up until midnight. I haven't seen a midnight New Year's Eve in probably 25 years. <laughs> but, in the glow of that Christmas tree, I will toast all of those who have touched my life, those who are still with me, those that have moved on and made their transition to the next life. Grateful for all of it. Willing, perhaps, a little bit more this time around to offer up all the things that I personally don't value that might be exactly what somebody else needs today. Pray with me. God of our future, God of our past. We open our hearts to your holy, life-changing, life-transfiguring presence in this moment. Grateful for having completed another year of life in your service. Thank you for the blessings we have received in the past year. Thank you for all the graces and the insights, the laughter, the victories. But thank you as well for the challenges and 
the hard lessons that we have had to learn, including the many goodbyes we've had to make. On the threshold of a new year, help us to be mindful that we are still precious in your sight. And like your Christ, the stone the builders rejected, but who became, in fact, the chief cornerstone, help us to remember that as we have put on Christ in baptism, so too we can become the rejected stone that will be transformed into the cornerstone that is Christ. Amen. Happy New Year.